All right, everybody, I'd like to welcome you to the webinar today. I appreciate you taking the time out to um, watch this with us, and hopefully you'll have some great questions for Steve when he is finished. Um, as you just noted, I am recording this webinar, and it will be available sometime next week on the Southern Rockies LCC YouTube channel. I will send out that information when it is, in fact, uploaded. Um, let me introduce, uh, for, and the other thing I'd like you to do is, is folks, that they could mute your phones during the presentation so that we don't have any background noise interrupts the presentation for other folks. Let me introduce you to Steve Hanser. Steve is a sagebrush ecosystem specialist at USGS. Um, he's based out of Reston, Virginia, but he comes out of the sagebrush country, originally in Boise, Idaho. I've worked with Steve for many, many years. Um, Truly thrilled that he could take the time to give this information to us. Um, I would like to also send you to some reports that Steve provided last Tuesday, this past Tuesday, which I sent out in anticipation of the webinar we had then. Those reports are, in fact, the written portion of this presentation. They are the ANA report, and they are a fantastic reference. So if you missed that or can't find it, let me know. I'll make sure I send it back out to you again. With that, I'm going to turn this over to Steve and give him the time to go through the, the annual report for sagebrush and sage browse um, research science being done by USGS, and we will have time for questions following. So, Steve. All right. Thanks, Pat. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining today. Uh, I'm just going to dive right on into um, this presentation outlining in a report and, and some of the activities we've been doing over the past year and we'll be uh, undertaking over um, over the course of, of the next year and beyond. So USGS uh, has provided a foundation for many of the land uh, management, major land management and resource management decisions um, over the last uh, decade and we continue to develop the science to inform uh, decisions to help support uh, local economies and continued conservation, management, and restoration of the sagebrush ecosystem. Uh, we have a broad research program that's focused on providing the science needed to inform conservation strategies and to help managers as they work towards sustainable sage grouse populations and restored landscapes for the broad range of uses critical to stakeholders across the western United States recently completed our annual report of sage grouse and sagebrush ecosystem research uh, that has been completed during the past year or is ongoing. And the report can be accessed uh, through the URL here uh, at the bottom of the slide. Uh, USGS is committed to addressing the high priority science needs that, are identif um, that have been identified by science and management community and are contained within the integrated rangeland fire management strategy actionable science plan. That plan represents a shared vision of the near-term science needed to inform uh, the next generation of management strategies and tools. Over the past year, we have initiated uh, a number of studies to directly address the needs that were identified within the actionable science plan. We've also realigned our program into the five themes that are, are contained in the plan. So what are those, you may ask? So the five themes are fire invasive species, restoration, sagebrush and sage grouse, and climate and weather. So these five themes cover uh, the broad range of issues facing the management community uh, across the sagebrush ecosystem. And uh, today I'll provide uh, an outline of the content within each of these sections in the USGS research portfolio and highlight a few of the individual research efforts within those. So moving right in, we go for the first theme is, is fire, and fire is a significant threat to maintaining uh, large contiguous um, areas of sagebrush uh, within uh, the majority of the western United States. And this, is, this threat has been in intensifying with increases in the prevalence of uh, invasive annual grasses, uh, primarily cheatgrass. So USGS rangeland fire research uh, includes projects that are working to determine effectiveness of fuel treatments and fuel breaks for reducing the occurrence and spread of fire within this ecosystem and the potential effects of those activities on sage grouse and other wildlife. And we're also increasing our understanding of the 
historic fire regimes in the sagebrush ecosystem and how uh, current and future condition um, may help us understand and de design effective fire suppression strategies. And we're also assessing strategies to improve application of post-fire management actions. So some examples of these efforts um, include a synthesis that's um, of the current knowledge about effects and effectiveness of fuel breaks um, that's being led by Doug Shineman out of our office in Boise. Um, and that product is due to be completed here uh, later this fall or early winter. We have uh, also several large-scale, large collaborative projects, um, such as the Sage Step project uh, we're working on with uh, uh, numerous partners that are helping under, improve our understanding of the long-term effects of fuel reduction treatments um, in areas of, of sagebrush as well as uh, conifer woodlands at the ecotone of sagebrush. And this year, in coordination with the Bureau of Land Management, we've also initiated an effort to assess fuel break strategies for protecting sage grouse populations, um, including identifying conditions under which fuel breaks are likely to benefit sage grouse populations, and also informing the strategic placement of, of fuel breaks. So uh, moving here to invasive species, through, through increasing fire frequency, um, competition with native species, uh, invasive plants are a significant threat to uh, the sagebrush ecosystem. So USGS science, scientists are addressing the need to work with managers uh, to develop and assess measures for prevention, eradication, and control of invasive plant species. Uh, we're also working to further refine our collective understanding of the suite of environmental, climatic, and disturbance factors that influence uh, invasive plant species distributions, and we're also developing maps to inform actions to control these species as well as inform uh, early detection um, and rapid response efforts. So the near-term uh, annual herbaceous mapping that uh, Steve Boyd and Bruce Wiley um, out of our Aeros Data Center are conducting, um, it, the, the map um, that they've recently produced for 2017 is shown here uh, at the bottom right of, of the screen. And the, with the warmer colors um, being higher, um, higher cover of, of cheatgrass or annual herbaceousness. So cheatgrass is the primary um, component of the annual, primary annual herbaceous component within the sagebrush system. So those areas in the, the warmer colors are those areas of high high cheatgrass cover. So these types of maps can help support invasive species control activities, as well as help predict fuel loads and uh, fire potential. And so um, this, these maps are, are created within, um, by May of each year, and can help identify those areas that uh, the fire community may need to pay attention uh, within, the, within that year. And through funding, uh, recent funding from the Fish and Wildlife Service, uh, uh, Boyd and Wiley are in the process of, of downscaling this type of product from the current 250 meter resolution down to 30 meter resolution to help further inform uh, invasive species control efforts. So the potential uh, of weed suppressive bacteria to control uh, cheatgrass has led uh, to a focus on the application and effectiveness of, these, of, these, of this approach and USGS has several ongoing collaborative efforts. In uh, the area burned by the Soda wildfire in Southwest Idaho, uh, Matt Germino is working with a large group of federal, state, and local collaborators to conduct a comparison of all the commercially available sources of weed suppressive bacteria. They're comparing bacterial treatments uh, with, both with and without herbicides, as well as other common post-fire uh, plant and soil treatments. He's also working on a comparison uh, across sprayed and non-sprayed plots in an area of top uh, topographic uh, complexity uh, north of Boise um, that burned in 2016. These efforts should help determine where and when weed suppressive bacteria are effective um, on target, the target invasive species and the potential effects on non-target native species. Also, how these best uh, how to best apply these bacteria to help outreach specialists and land managers be 
informed about the potential benefits and risks of using these weed suppressive bacteria. Another effort uh, being conducted by Dave Pike, um, working with Mike Gregg and others at, at Hanford Reach in Washington, are using weed suppressive bacteria known as uh, D7. Um, they're examining proactive application uh, to uh, remaining sagebrush habitats and also that, that also have an understory of cheatgrass to help, um, help increase resi the resistance uh, to further invasion while uh, retaining existing native sage step communities. This application of bacteria to sagebrush understories could reduce uh, sagebrush fuel loads, which could further reduce fire risk and, and rate of spread of fire. Also, these bacteria could be um, a cost-effective means for modifying the seed environment, therefore boosting the success of post-fire rehabilitation efforts through reduced competition for native seedlings um, from, from annual cheatgrass. Um, this could be done without the negative effects to native plants um, that have been observed um, with the use of some herbicides. So this brings us to restoration and the restoration of sagebrush habitats following stressors, including wildfire, invasive species, and numerous disturbance types is important for maintaining the sagebrush ecosystem. Our scientists conduct a range of studies to assess the um, efficiency and effectiveness of restoration actions and determining factors that can increase their success. Here I've provided a few examples that we're working on in collaboration with the Bureau of Land Management. Uh, starting in the, the upper right, uh, Matt Germino is leading an effort to monitor and conduct an extensive assessment of strategies um, and, out, and the outcomes of the Soto wildfire emergency stabilization and rehabilitation effort in Southwest Idaho and Southeast Oregon. This effort will provide information to help inform retreatment decisions, determine when to allow resumption of grazing, uh, report on site recovery and treatment effectiveness, and provide a comprehensive assessment of this major uh, rehabil fire rehabilitation effort. In the bottom right is um, a, a screenshot of the Land Treatment Digital Library, also known as the LTDL. The LTDL uh, provides access to um, a, a very large set of legacy treatment uh, information. Um, this contains approximately 40,000 um, individual treatments uh, that were conducted primarily on uh, BLM managed lands, and these records uh, go back into the 1940s and contain um, all of the information um, that's available uh, from the BLM. Uh, USGS uh, building upon the, that treasure trove of information in the LTDL, uh, USGS is leading an interagency team to develop a land treatment planning tool that will help land managers learn from, from that knowledge um, as they plan new treatments. And also this tool will be valuable for implementation of uh, further adaptive management efforts. And finally, um, in the bottom left, we is the Field of Sagebrush Dreams project, uh, which is trying to determine uh, if you build it, will they come or will they stay following a wildfire? This effort led by Pete Coates, Dave Pike, and Cam Aldridge is assessing alternative planting strategies to help jumpstart recovery of functional sage grouse habitat as quickly as possible after wildfire. They're investigating the use of sagebrush seedlings in multiple configurations and will be tracking sagebrush regrowth, uh, evaluating these area, the use of these areas by sage grouse and quantifying the success of those sage grouse um, that are using these revegetated areas. Um, in this photo from uh, the, the area of the Rush Fire on the California-Nevada border, each of those, those white cages in the picture um, contains a sagebrush seedling. And as you can see, this is uh, planted in a, a different configuration than the, the typical um, gridded pattern or um, evenly spaced pattern uh, for seedling planting. So these are just three examples, um, and we have many others that are included in, in the annual report. So these efforts to maintain and improve conditions for sage grouse and other sagebrush associated species can be more effective with an understanding of the behavior 
uh, habitat use and population structure of these numerous species. Additionally, holistically understanding the dynamics within the sagebrush ecosystem can help land managers apply strategies to maintain um, the ecosystem and all of the, the plant for all the plants and wildlife that depend on it. USGS conducts a broad range of research um, in this topic area to inform management of sage grouse and the, the, the ecosystem. Um, some examples um, include the development of sage grouse monitoring and, and population analysis tools. Um, so in this area, um, in the sage grouse, in the bi-state sage grouse population, uh, Pete Coates has developed an integrated population model to estimate population growth rates. Um, this model indicates that the bi-state population is, is stable overall, but evidence suggests that there's a declining trend for one of the subpopulations. So Pete and his collaborators are now assessing which components of sage grouse life history are driving population change as well as how and when uh, climatic factors influence particular uh, life history stages. Building um, in part upon that work, the team, com uh, team composed of, of PIs from USGS, um, Fish and Wildlife Service, uh, the Western Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies, and University of Montana are developing a hierarchical population assessment tool, um, incorporating spatial and temporal scales into monitoring strategies can result in a more robust detection of population rates of change and help in determining whether trajectories um, of those rates of change are driven by local or regional factors. The initial phases of this are completed for Nevada and Northeast, Northeastern California and Wyoming, and the team is expanding um, this work uh, range-wide. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about this effort uh, later in the talk. This and other projects looking at population trajectories um, as well as microhabitat characteristics um, of areas used by these species are helping to, um, helping to clarify the vegetation components for successful reproduction of the species, which can then further inform management strategies to maintain or improve those conditions that are necessary for them. This knowledge is amplified as the availability, uh, quality, and resolution of map products um, um, in increase across the range. The work of Colin Homer um, on mapping sagebrush ecosystem components is an important step. In collaboration with the BLM, Colin has produced a remote sensing based characterization of shrublands for the majority of the sage grouse range, including the entire Great Basin, Montana, Wyoming, and the Dakotas. These map products quantify the proportion of shrub, um, sagebrush, herbaceous cover, annual herbaceous cover, litter, bare ground, uh, shrub height, uh, and, and sagebrush height. Uh, these metrics are available for 1% intervals for those cover metrics, um, and then uh, within uh, centimeters for um, the, the height metrics. And those are within each 30-meter grid cell uh, across, the, across the range. This information enables generation of a variety of wildlife habitat predictions, including, uh, including sage grouse habitat. Current mapping is underway to complete the remaining areas of the western states um, that contain significant portions of shrub and grass, and updates to this range-wide product are planned to be completed on a regular five-year cycle. So these base products that I just described, um, as they are completed, Colin, is Colin and his team are leveraging uh, the information in the Landsight Stat Archive to go back in time, uh, mapping vegetation change since 1984 up through 2016. This newly developed approach will enable unprecedented comprehensive analyses of shrub and grass change through time. These time series products will support research, um, evaluating sage grouse habitat and population dynamics, restoration success, treatment and recovery, and uh, cheatgrass change dynamics. Data for northern Nevada and southern Idaho, as well as portions, of, as well as the state of Wyoming, are nearing completion. And once the historic analysis is completed, um, as future imagery becomes available, it can be easily added um, to create new updated, um, updated cover maps 
uh, to help monitor conditions into the future. So we're also conducting an array of genetic analyses. Um, the premier effort in this area is the range-wide uh, Sainz-Grouse genetic, Genetics Project uh, being led by Sarah euler McCants out of our Fort Collins office. Um, and through, through support from uh, BLM, Sage Grouse Initiative, Northern, Great, the Great Northern LCC, and many others. This project uh, is per perhaps the largest terrestrial effort of its kind, and it will delineate the range-wide network of uh, sage grouse breeding populations. The genetic data um, from feathers collected at Lex, uh, sage grouse Lex across the range are being analyzed in combination with landscape information to identify the geographic distance, uh, topographic features, anthropogenic land uses, and other factors that influence sage grouse dispersal and genetic exchange. The results of this study will be important for informing conservation planning and efforts to reduce population fragmentation, isolation, and the risk, risk of extirpation. There's also leveraging advanced genomic sequencing capabilities to sequence the genomes of the greater and Gunnison sage grouse, uh, to help, which will help facilitate studies of adaptive genetic variation, including the metabolic adaptations of these species to different types of, of sagebrush. This will help improve our understanding of the timing of divergence of isolated population and also help identify factors that influence uh, gene flow across the range. Uh, Sarah is also leading an effort through the USGS Fish and Wildlife Service Strategic Science Partnership um, to understand genetic implications of translocation in uh, Gunnison sage grass. Lastly, in this topic, we continue to improve our ecological understanding of sagebrush associated species um, other than sage grass. Uh, this includes sagebrush songbird responses to woodland removal as part of the Sage Step Project as well as several projects funded through uh, the Fish and Wildlife Service funded uh, WAFWA Sagebrush Science Initiative. These efforts include uh, evaluation of biodiversity of sagebrush dependent species uh, within sage grouse habitats in the Wyoming basins area, um, an effort to improve our understanding of species habitat relationships um, of lizards and snakes within this ecosystem uh, being conducted by David Pilliard, uh, the work by Matt Kaufman, uh, to identify and prioritize uh, mule deer migration corridors across the West. And Anna Shalfoon uh, at the Wyoming Co-op Unit is increasing our knowledge of how climatic conditions influence the reproduction of sagebrush dependent uh, birds in Wyoming. And that provides a nice segue to our final topic here, which is uh, climate and weather. And so USGS is, um, has ongoing efforts to increase the overall understanding of important climate variables uh, to improve uh, seeding success and um, other efforts are helping to inform the development of climate adaptation strategies. For example, post-fire soil stability is a major issue for restoration and rehabilitation of big sagebrush habitat owing to the variability in weather patterns and the potential for wind erosion of exposed soils. Matrimino is using a, a suite of field measurements and simulations to help determine where, when, and why wind and water erosion occurs. This information will help managers assess landscape uh, suitability for seeding and will also uh, be important for the development of assessments and tools that can use this information and others from advanced uh, uh, weather predictions um, and inform future land treatment implementation. The current understanding of resistance of sagebrush ecosystems to invasion by uh, exotic annual grasses and resilience to, the, to disturbance has led to maps of vulner the vulnerability using estimates of uh, soil temperature and moisture conditions. John Bradford at our, our Southwest Biological Science Center um, and his team are finalizing projections of soil temperature and moisture conditions into the future to understand the potential implications for altered precipitation and temperature on sagebrush ecosystems and also help uh, inform potential uh, climate, climate adaptation strategies. So this completes an overview of the ongoing projects and uh, we, we will welcome any questions about individual projects um, 
within the, the annual report, we've provided contact information for the individual lead scientists uh, for each of the projects. And I, will, I would be glad to um, take any questions at the end of the uh, presentation today. And I've also included my uh, contact information um, if you want to follow up uh, after this presentation. So um, I also provided uh, through Pat uh, earlier this week um, a list of uh, USGS Sagebrush ecosystem uh, products and publications that have been released uh, over the past year. Um, that document contains the citation, a brief description, and a link to the products um, to, to access the, the actual uh, research products themselves. I'm not going to walk through um, that full list in detail. Um, since there are about 50, 50 different products listed there. However, I wanted to point out a, a list of uh, three different products um, here today that were recently developed for uh, in the state of Nevada uh, to demonstrate the range of our work um, that's contained in that list. These uh, three products were all led by Pete Coates um, in conjunction with uh, the BLM, state agencies, uh, industry partners, and, and, and others. The first product, um, I touched on this a little bit earlier in, in the talk, and uh, the public, this publication can be accessed uh, through the, the link here on the right of your screen. So this USGS open file report outlines the development of a hierarchical sage grouse population monitoring tool for Nevada and Northeastern California. This tool can assist federal, state, and private land managers by providing monitoring and early warning system to identify sage grouse lex, clusters of lex, and populations where intervention may be necessary to sustain populations and will assist in the evaluation of the effectiveness of conservation efforts to benefit sage grouse. To briefly describe this process, um, the, this process uses a, a nested hierarchy. Um, this is shown um, on the map down here on the bottom left. Uh, with Lexus star, the blue stars, uh, nested within clusters, which are the black outlines, which are nested within regions, which are those co the, the multiple uh, colors on that map. Um, these are used to compare population trends between the levels of the hierarchy and to help identify areas where those trends have diverged. Depending upon the length and severity of these different, uh, the different trends, the tool provides a set of signals. This can be uh, a, what, what we're calling a soft signal or similar to a yellow stoplight that raises awareness and indicates the need for a closer look at conditions. Or a hard signal, which is, can be similar to a red light um, and indicates an immediate, act, immediate action may be necessary. The results of this tool for Nevada and Northeastern California uh, for the year 2015 are shown here in the bottom right um, with uh, the soft and hard signals shown as yellow or red stars, respectively. The team is working to expand these, um, this approach uh, to, the geogra to the range of the sage grouse, and we'll also be developing methods to assess uh, population change relative to vegetation characteristics, uh, climate, uh, and disturbances such as fire, uh, and cheatgrass and other management relevant gradients. So the second product, um, given the, the ongoing discussion about the need to understand sage grouse microhabitat characteristics, uh, P. Coates, um, he's been, he led this effort to summarize a, a, a series of field collected variables, sage, sage grouse nesting and, and brood rearing sites uh, across uh, California. Um, the sites, uh, the field sites where the data was collected are shown here in the map on the bottom right. The report contains a series of tables that provide managers with information about the level of individual microhabitat vegetation characteristics that indicate suitable marginal um, or unsuitable sage grouse nest and brood rearing habitat as they relate to habitat selection or survival. It should be pointed out that this effort was um, used the recently identified corrections for herbaceous vegetation at nest site locations. 
um, shown at the bottom left here is a portion of one of these tables uh, with these different uh, character characteristics. And as you can see under this habitat column, um, there's metrics for uh, both steric uh, um, or dry or mesic uh, moist sites, and, and there are also characteristics for fire effective sites uh, within the report. I would welcome you to um, access the report using the, the link here on the screen. So the last example um, outlines the development and application of advanced method for mapping pinion and juniper trees at a high resolution. In the bottom two images, you can see the raw aerial nape imagery used to develop these products on the left, and on the right is the map tree cover um, in bright green. This report provides, um, these map products provide um, high accuracy maps um, of sparse phase one juniper um, up to mature, mature uh, conifer woodland. Um, accuracy of these maps ranges from 79 to 97% accuracy uh, with a mean of 86%. Um, spatial data um, that is contained in the report is also provided um, in, in, in GIS uh, format through the USGS science-based website and uh, is provided in multiple versions, including a one meter uh, resolution tree occurrence, which is what's being shown here on the, on the map or on the screen. Um, there's also a one meter with canopy, uh, canopy cover metric within 50 meters of that pixel. There's also a 30 meter uh, cell product uh, with values ranging from zero to 100%. And then um, there's also a map provided, uh, which uh, provides accuracy results um, across the, the mapped range. These map products can help inform conifer removal efforts um, and have already been used to do uh, a, a host of sage grouse modeling uh, within the state of Nevada. And so with that, I am going to stop and uh, I welcome any questions. And if you have any follow-ups, please uh, contact me um, at the, the phone or email uh, shown here on the screen. Over to you, Pat. Thanks so much, Steve. Um, do they want any questions for Steve? We have 20 minutes, and please feel free to tap into his expertise. Hi, Steve. This is Gail Collins, and I had a question about the modeling effort that was recently released in the Northeast California population. Okay. Um, do you know where the source of the LEC data that they used for that was? Are you talking about the first product I just the uh, first of the three? Yeah. Um, so that came from California um, and, and Nevada um, State. So the state provided that data? Yes. Okay, great. That helps. Thank yes. you. Anyone else have questions for Steve? Well, Steve, I think they're letting you off easy today. <laughs> I do appreciate your time in presenting this. Um, as Steve said, his number, his contact information is on the screen right now. Feel free to do or write that down, contact him separately if you are shy or <laughs> come up with questions later. Um, if you have other questions too, you can also reach out through me and I can try to get some information from Steve for you. And don't forget, the report that we sent out to everyone on Tuesday. If you did not get that, please let me know and I'll make sure that you receive it. Um, and again, reminding that this presentation has been recorded and we will get that posted on the Southern Rockies LCC YouTube channel. Sometime next week I'll send out a notification regarding that. 